It seems to me that my destiny is to be the bride of adventure. I expect you approve because you've sent me on so many now that I've quite developed a taste for them. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Netflix original teen shows. Dude, <sighs> most oh, metal ever! <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking at all the best series the streamer has produced about the trials and tribulations of being a teen, as well as those targeting that demographic. If we missed any of your favorites, let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Alexa and Katie. Oh my gosh, that's in three days. <laughs> what are we going to wear? What are we going to say? You work on breathing, I'll work on outfits, come on. Freshman year of high school is tough no matter what. But when Alexa finds out that she has cancer, the beginning of high school becomes almost unbearable. When school starts, instead of seeing me, everybody's going to see cancer. Everybody's going to know me as the sick girl, and I'm so much more than that. Alexa and Katie follows Alexa and her best friend Katie as they try to navigate this new step in their lives while dealing with Alexa's illness. The series ended after three seasons, but while it ran, it offered a tender, funny, and realistic look at what it's like for a young person to deal with a serious illness. Alexa and Katie have a wonderful friendship, and it was great to see a show take on such serious subject matter, especially for teenagers. Some people are lucky enough to have a best friend. I'm even luckier. I got a Katie. Number 19, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Let's go, witches! Many of us first fell in love with Sabrina Spellman in the 90s with the classic sitcom Sabrina the Teenage Witch. But in 2018, Netflix gifted us with a much spookier adaptation of the classic Archie comic. My deal was with the Dark Lord. Yes, but hell's under new management now. Mine! Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is jam-packed with campy, horror fun, and great visuals. As Sabrina, Kieran and Shipka expertly combines playfulness with power, giving us a boss witch for the ages. Truthfully, I was kind of hoping you'd be cast as Lilith. Mm. I'm not sure I could handle playing such a subservient character. It's not really my style. No, it isn't. But Sabrina doesn't only have to deal with witch problems. She has regular teenage problems, too. One of the show's strengths was how effortlessly it combined these two things. Oh, Stoas. I do so love stirring the cauldron. Number 18, and with an E. Could you please spell it with an E when you speak it? And with an E looks much more distinguished. Very well, then. Anne, with an E, it's time to come inside. As a kid, you more than likely read Anne of Green Gables, Lucy Maud Montgomery's classic children's lit masterpiece. There have been numerous adaptations of the novel, but not until Anne with an E did we find one that we loved just as much. Yes, that's the right name for it. I, I know because of the thrill. Do things ever give you a thrill? 13-year-old Anne Shirley is a wonderful young heroine, and the show uses her story to tackle numerous themes. Throughout Anne with an E, the characters work through issues such as classicism, gender inequality, freedom of speech, and so much more. Anne teaches us to question everything and to be ourselves, two things every teen should learn. But because in my maturity, I've come to the happy evolutionary opinion that I am unusual, and I embrace it. Number 17, Ginny and Georgia. After the success of Gilmore Girls in the 2000s, it's a wonder that it took this long to make another mother-daughter vehicle. But with Ginny and Georgia, Netflix more than filled that void. You ever think that maybe my secrets are to protect you? To keep you happy and safe? You want to know everything, Paige? You think you need to know everything? Well, here it is, darling. The show follows 15-year-old Ginny and her mother, Georgia, who had her when she was just a teenager herself. Much like Gilmore Girls, the two oftentimes feel more like friends than mother and daughter. Nothing is happening. Why are you making such a big deal about this? Does Maxine know? Is Hunter aware about Marcus and this little Spider-Man routine? <laughs> oh, hi, kettle, meat, pot. I think you two might really hit it off. The program not only explores the dating and social lives of Ginny and Georgia, but spends a lot of time on developing their relationship. If you're looking for a sweet and funny mother-daughter show, this one's for you. I think you handled that well. 
All right, I think you handled that not horribly. Number 16, Julie and the Phantoms. We love music. We love ghost stories. So why not combine the two? That's exactly what Julie and the Phantoms did. This Netflix series centers on Julie, a struggling teen musician dealing with the death of her mother. During a listening session gone wrong, Julie accidentally summons the ghosts of a 90s band named Sunset Curve. What is that? What are you doing? It's my phone. No, stop talking to them. They aren't real. There's no such thing as cute ghosts. <laughs> oh, think we're cute? What's a girl to do? Start her own phantasmic musical group, of course. The show is funny, creative, and always has a musical number or two that'll get your toes tapping. Unfortunately, Netflix canceled the show after just one season, but we'll always hold it dear. Number 15, Everything Sucks. The bomb? <laughs> All that and a bag of chips? What does that mean? <laughs> Everyone loves a good parody, but sometimes it's hard to merge parody with actually interesting plot and characters. Luckily for us, Everything Sucks was able to do just that. The show takes place in Oregon in 1996 and parodies 90s teen culture in a way that's both fun and nostalgic. Luke, settle this. Settle what? That ridiculous song. Winning the lottery and dying the next day, the subject is 98 years old. There's nothing ironic about dying at 98. The show mostly centers around students in the drama and AV clubs and focuses on the difficulties that come with sexuality, drugs, and more. Euphoria fans will recognize a young Sydney Sweeney. And the rest of the cast is wonderful too, bringing humor and pathos to this short-lived teen series. Do you want to come to my place after school? Sure. Meet by your locker? Cool. See you later, sweetie. Number 14, The Society. Netflix often cancels shows before their time, but with this one, we don't know if we'll ever be able to forgive them. The Society premiered in 2019 and immediately got fans trying to uncover its central mystery. Has anyone been able to reach anyone? Nope. No. No one? No. Okay. Well, there's, there's, there's definitely a simple explanation. The show follows some teens in West Ham, Connecticut, who have to try to figure out how to survive on their own after everyone else in their town goes missing. The program featured a stellar cast and had some pretty interesting things to say about the nature of community and adulthood. In the name of my sister, I'm taking over the responsibility of keeping us all safe. Um, of reinstating and enforcing the rules that she established. When the first season ended on a cliffhanger, fans could hardly wait for season two. After an initial renewal, however, Netflix canceled the show, citing the COVID-19 pandemic as the reason why. These are people who we trusted, who betrayed us. We wanted you to see them for who they really are. Number 13, Heartstopper. Hi. Hi. Did I forget something? Um. One of the newer shows on this list, Netflix's Heartstopper immediately packed a punch with fans. The coming-of-age show follows protagonists Charlie and Nick as they start to develop feelings for each other. While Charlie is already out as gay, Nick has spent the majority of the series so far figuring out his own sexuality and feelings. Would you go out with someone who wasn't a girl? I don't know. Maybe. The show is incredibly tender and empathetic to both boys and tackles a lot of serious issues while never skimping on the romance. It was so immediately popular that Netflix has already ordered a second and third season, meaning more time with Nick and Charlie for us. You're my boyfriend! I'm your boyfriend! <laughs> Number 12, The End of the F***ing World. Before I Am Not Okay With This, more on that one later, Channel 4 and Netflix adapted Charles Forsman's The End of the F***ing World. 
whose dark concept was unlike anything we'd seen before. I need to get to my dad's as soon as possible before anybody finds a body. Okay. Originally premiering in the UK, with Netflix distributing the dark comedy drama everywhere else soon after, the series centers on James, a teen who believes himself to be a psychopath and decides to kill one of his classmates. I didn't know where we were going or when I was going to kill her, but I punched my dad in the face and stole his car. And that felt like a good place to start. But he ends up bonding with his targeted victim, and the show shifts to focus on their friendship and the misadventures they find themselves on after they decide to run away together and travel on a road trip of sorts around England. We need new clothes. I think it's fair to say that my disguise wasn't as effective as Alyssa's. Number 11. 13 Reasons Why. Hey, assholes. Picture's worth a thousand words. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the novel by Jay Asher, this show has been hugely popular and also very controversial because of its sensitive subject matter. What came after my first kiss? Not so wonderful. The first season focuses on a high schooler who chooses to end her life and looks back at all of the events that brought her to that decision. Did you help her do it? No, I did not. Did you know that she was going to? No. Then how the hell did you- Listen to the tapes, Clay. The drama looks at many of the difficult issues that teens are facing today through a dramatic lens, giving us characters that we can't help but feel for as we watch them navigate the hell that high school can be. Turn the tape over for more. Number 10, Atypical. Did you break into my house with chocolate-covered strawberries? No, uh, the, the window was open. Sam, the 18-year-old protagonist of Atypical, has autism spectrum disorder, which is what brings this show outside the norm. While at first the Coming of Age series received criticism for not portraying the disorder accurately, they took people's comments to heart in season two and improved by hiring more actors and writers with autism in the cast and crew. Did you get married? No. Is the baby a boy or a girl? Boy. Who's the father? That's private. In many ways, Sam encounters all of the usual perils of a high school student, but his outlook on life makes it even more difficult for him than it is for your average teen. Thank you all for being a part of my epic journey. The future is female. I, I don't know what that means. Number nine, I am not okay with this. I wish you would just stop talking. Wipe that smug smile off his stupid, stupid face. Released in 2020, I Am Not Okay With This inevitably garnered comparisons to both Stranger Things and the end of the f***ing world because it focuses on a teenage girl who's grieving her father and also discovering that she has superpowers. Breathe. It's based on a comic book by the already mentioned Charles Forsman. The show takes the difficult experience of growing up and facing adulthood with this unique angle, showing teenage anger in a way that's much more visceral than we're used to seeing on TV. Number 8. Control Z. If there is one thing we love more than hackers, it's teenage hackers. This Spanish-language Netflix show oddly feels more like a fresh take on Gossip Girl than the new Gossip Girl does, but we wouldn't ask for anything different. Fingiendo, jodiéndose unos a otros, pero míralos ahora. Control Z follows a group of high school students who suddenly find their deepest and darkest secrets exposed by a mysterious hacker online. One student, Sofia, decides she's not going to take this sitting down. ¿Y qué haces aquí? Observable. Sí, sí, pero ¿qué ves? The show offers a fun mystery and is full of twists and turns. All three seasons are available on Netflix, and it's sure to keep you on your toes the whole time. Es un mundo nuevo, ¿no? Donde todos fueron honestos una puta vez. Pues ya te lo di. Number seven, Outer Banks. At the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, one Netflix show rose above the rest. All we need to do right now is just figure out a way to get into that cargo hold of that rat. Until then, we just play low, just act normal. Right, and how exactly do we do that? Kegger? At the time, it seemed like everyone was watching Outer Banks, and for good reason. The program is set in coastal North Carolina and follows a group of local teens through romance, mystery, crime, and adventure. Dude, what? It's not worth anything. 
The show has a soapy melodrama feel to it, reminiscent of our favorite 2000s and 90s shows of yore. With multiple seasons, it seems that Outer Banks was not just an early pandemic phenomenon. It's here to stay. None of it belongs to us now, huh? Just got a point. Yeah. Six-way split. Poglandium. Oh, boy. I claim the Poglandium. I like the ring of it. Number six, On My Block. This comedy drama has got to be one of the most underrated teen shows that Netflix has aired. Guys, check out my game. Wait, ain't that just gave me the nod? Are you in my girl, cabron? Despite holding a 95% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, many people haven't heard of On My Block, which tells the story of four young people growing up in the diverse area of South Central Los Angeles. Hands up, money out. How can we take our money out with our hands up? No, you book has got that back school guap. It's orientation day, so technically we're neither back to school nor out of school. We see Monse, Ruby, Jamal, and Caesar starting their high school years off together and face all the difficulties that typical teens do, along with the added issues they encounter because of living in an underprivileged area. I was just trying to keep our crew together, but since I'm the only one who cares, you're all dead to me. I'll survive on my own. Number five, American Vandal. If you like true crime shows, but also want a good laugh every once in a while, then this show is for you. He replaced my license plate frame with another frame that said, I heart boobs. Poking fun at the trend of true crime documentaries, American Vandal takes a satirical look at an instance of high school vandalism and treats it with the seriousness that those shows would a murder case. What else did the school board miss? All right, take a look at this. These are the dicks that you drew in Shapiro's class. Someone has vandalized 27 cars in the parking lot of Hanover High School with images that resemble male members, and a group of students decides to get to the bottom of it. In season two, the crime is different, but the theme is the same, and it's possibly even better. While Dylan spends his days delivering diapers and french fries, robbed of his senior year and potentially college, Tromboli walks the halls like a hero. But what if we can't trust him? What if he's not as reliable as a school board would have you to believe? Number four, Never Have I Ever. This series seems to have arrived at exactly the right moment. I'd like to be invited to a party with alcohol and hard drugs. I'm not gonna do them. I just like the opportunity to say, no cocaine for me, thanks. Created and executive produced by none other than Mindy Kaling, Never Have I Ever is about Devi Vishwakumar, a young Indian American girl living in modern LA. Her father suddenly died shortly before the action of the show began, and in her grief, she temporarily lost the use of her legs. The show is undeniably a comedy, but it also has a lot of heart, taking us through Davy's grieving period, which she has to face whether she likes it or not. What are you doing here? This is my living room. Mm, no, no, I mean, you died. Oh, Dad, I'm better now. Number three, Elite. Don't let the fact that it's a Spanish language production scare you off. There's a reason this thriller teen drama is so high on our list. Estás quitando la plaza a alguien que de verdad sí la necesita. Vamos a ver, ¿tú te crees que yo venía aquí a estudiar? No, no, no. He venido aquí a conocer a la peña que más parte el bacalao. Focusing on an exclusive private school and three lower income teens who somehow find themselves attending, Elite is not just a typical high school show, but also a murder mystery. No enteras de nada tú, ¿no? Sabes lo que he hecho yo por ti. Ya lo tenía todo arreglado y has tenido que venir tú a joderlo. Y ahora me toca a mí limpiar tu mierda. Not only that, but it also deals with a lot of more political issues like diversity and xenophobia. While you can watch it with the Castilian Spanish dubbed over with English, we'd really recommend trying it with subtitles to be able to hear the original dialogue. La norma dice que no se permite ningún tipo de complemento. Mi hijab no es ningún complemento. Number two, Stranger Things taking the world by storm with its impressive supernatural effects and comforting 80s callbacks, Stranger Things has kept viewers coming back by giving us a relatable cast of kids to root for. You. You said he takes what? Mirkwood. Mirkwood. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Mirkwood? I have not. That sounds made up to me. No, it's from Lord of the Rings. Well, the Hobbit. Though Mike, Dustin, Lucas, and Will start off mostly caring about Dungeons and Dragons, once Eleven enters their lives, everything gets turned, well, upside down. By the third season, not only do the Hawkins kids have to contend with monsters, but the risk of moving away from their friends, hitting up the local mall, and most dauntingly, dating. I dump your ass. 
Luckily, they have each other, as well as the likes of resident mom Steve Harrington, Will's brother Jonathan, Mike's sister Nancy, Robin Buckley, and Eddie Munson to guide and help them along the way. Now you're gonna go in there, yeah. you look like a million bucks, yeah. and you're gonna slam death. Like a lion. Uh, don't do that, okay? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Daybreak. Teenagers live in the post-apocalypse with zombie-like creatures and more. So what's life like during the apocalypse? Brace yourself, I take you on a trip down memory lane. It's awesome. There's no rules left because adults turn into what we call ghoulies. Greenhouse Academy. Boarding school adventures for the win. Do not set that off. You haven't won. I'm not trying to win. Ah! 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 Hang on. First kill. If being a teen wasn't hard enough, try being a vampire. I won't underestimate you. Because there's a feeling you get when a monster's breath eases up your nostrils. There's a warning prickle on the back of your neck. Grand Army. High school, Brooklyn style. Yeah, but I'm not all talking. I proved to you that I'm not. making mad people anxious. Stop. I'm gonna slide down this banister. I'm gonna walk the talk. I'm gonna talk to you. No, I'm dead ass. I bet you I do it. Trinkets. Despite their various backgrounds, these girls have an unbreakable bond. We don't expect you to like us or even understand us, but we just want the truth to be known. Because we may be thieves, but we're not liars. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sex Education He wants her to wear a strap on. She's not really into it. It's a classic power dynamic issue. I wish my mom was a sex guru. Despite the fact that it's set in a world where American high school customs seemingly exist in the idyllic British countryside, Sex Education may be the most realistic teen show ever made. Nice rack, Wiley. <laughs> Say that again? Nice. <gasps> yes, it has an ambiguous 80s aesthetic, but it also confronts some of the diverse sexual issues that young people all face. There is plenty of representation on screen here, be it racial, sexual, or class-based. Three Viagras. Jesus Christ. You said there was gonna be no judgment. Sorry. Is three Viagras bad? The characters on this British comedy drama may not always make the right choices, but we can't help but root for them anyway and hope that it all turns out okay in the end. I didn't do a poo. I was crying. Oh. Right, well, I hope you're okay. Thank you. An odd little man. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.